In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters in Christ in the waters of baptism, Josephine died with Christ and rose with, her, with, with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. pray. O God, in whom sinners find mercy and the saints find joy, we pray to you for our sister Josephine, whose body we honor with Christian burial, that she may be delivered from the bonds of death. Admit her to the joyful company of your saints and raise her on the last day to rejoice in your presence forever. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And you have Elena to do our first reading from the Old Testament. Elena. Isaiah. Um, a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will be will prove for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from a whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we walk to save. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Pastures he gives me repose. He 
beside the restful waters, he feeds me, he refreshes my soul. My Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in bright paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. My Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus dies, died and rose, so too will God through Jesus, bringing with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are, we, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with the word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the tr trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console with one another these words. The word of the Lord. in the life, says the Lord, whoever believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, For hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life will lose it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and my dear sisters in Christ, one of the great things we'll hear this weekend's readings, we're going to be called to love God with all our minds, with all our heart, our soul, and our strength. In other words, we're called to love him with all we have, 
or that we are. But if you love him and call to love him, we must have a reason why we should. And we as the people of God must have a reason why we love and we worship. Whenever we express our faith and live that faith, we're making a statement, a statement about God. And if we live our faith, then we have something to stay. And the living out of that faith is a self a statement. For those who do not live their faith and live their Catholic faith, they're also making a statement. There is nothing in God to be admired and nothing to love. Josephine, however, saw it differently. There was much in God to be loved, much in God to be admired, and her strength of faith was a great testament to that. One of the reasons why I love him, many of the reasons I love him, admire him, he befuddles me, He's puzzling. He's a very puzzling figure. And as they would say, therefore, full of surprises. And joy lies in the surprise. Why well, admire him? Because here we are in the midst of this moment, grief, stricken, sorrowful, at the passing of Josephine, and here we have these words in today's first reading. What is death? Death, a veil. Veil, a veil? Yes, death is a veil that I can lift. How different are the thoughts of men to the thoughts of God, befuddling, puzzling, and yet at the same time, that's what our Christian hope lies in. That your thoughts, my thoughts, and God's thoughts are not the same. Thanks be to God. That his ways are not your ways, nor my ways. His ways are quite different. Thanks be to God. And therein lies the heart of today's second reading, this matter of hope. Our entire Christian hope dwells and moves on this one fundamental principle. That God's thoughts and our thoughts are not the same. And his ways and our ways. And without it, without that difference in thought, what our existence this would be. And so in this moment, we gather in this place. We gather here in hope, in great hope that God sees death as something quite different. For us as human beings, death we use as an instrument of fear, violence, to wreak misery in the world and in our fellow men. God will use death, instrument of salvation, an instrument of his wisdom. How befuddling, how surprising, and therefore, what great joy for us who walk in the valley of the shadow of death, facing it every day. God, our great hope. Faith, 
our great refuge. And what a figure, what a strength, what an example and model we have in the person of Josephine. Life was not easy, not at all, not only simply from birth, not even in the midst of life, but even towards the end of her life. What great struggle, what great battle, and yet she never lost it. And she'd be quite surprised because while we may probably at times and moments, she may have doubt her strength. Oh no, what a great tower of strength she was. Never wavered in her faith, never wavered, no matter the difficulty, rather than leaving and abandoning her faith, that struggle drew her closer. How befuddling, how puzzling is God. And therein lies the entire joy, Easter joy, that we as people will have. Several years ago, I'd gone to Boston to celebrate a graduation mass and the dean took me out to dinner, and she belonged to this parish, Our Lady of Victory. And she said what she wanted to do was to petition the bishop to have the name of the parish changed from Victory. And so I proceeded to ask her, why would she want to do that? And she said, it speaks of war. And I said to her, Ma'am, life is a great battle. And the moment you lose that idea and lose that fact, then you have lost. You've lost it because it is a daily battle, a great battle. And as a consequence, every day we get up, it is a great struggle. For me, every morning, I'm reminded it is a great struggle. My snooze button. I would love to sleep, but duty calls. My first battle of the day to remind me, get up, gird yourself, and ready for the battle of the day. And I give thanks to God for the faith that allows me to battle it. And I speak for Josephine in her struggle. What kept her so strong? What kept her firm? Her faith. And she was a lady of great prayer. This is the church's greatest prayer. And by some miraculous means of divine providence, by her death, God has summoned us all into this place and this time. To what end? To what end? A befuddling question. And it's found in the Book of Wisdom. It's in the Book of Wisdom that God would lay out one of his greatest and most beautiful exposition on what death is in lifting the veil. And he'll speak of it. Not of death, destruction, or well, not her, God will tell us, it's not Josephine who is experiencing death, to we the living. To we the living who are grieving, we the living who are filled with sorrow and hurt and pain, he will tell us in the book of wisdom, it's the living that experiences death. She's fine. The question is, how do we move on? How do we deal with this moment? And what Josephine's death has done, summoned us 
to this place. Because it's not she who needs the hope. She who needs the faith. She who needs the comfort. It's we the living. It's we the living who needs it and that comfort. And she does and is doing what she's always done. Call us in the context of prayer. The greatest and most beautiful and profound expression of faith to commend us to her God. The God from whom she draw forth all her strength, all her vitality, all her wisdom, everything that she drew and summon in this place and to commend us to him because it's we who need it. Yes, we come here to commend her and to remember her to the mercy of God but like all things that takes place in this house, it's about this wonderful, holy exchange between God and us, between the saints and us. I'll leave you with this. I went to the class, the CCD class this week, and one of the topics they're dealing with, saints. And I asked them, said, what are saints? Not an answer. I said, saints are ordinary people who do the most extraordinary things. And what makes them do extraordinary things is the gift, strength, and grace that God gives. And she blessed Josephine tremendously. Great strength great faith, all her troubles and all her sorrows and grief, she never let go. And now the torch is passed. It's we now who are grieving. We who are sorrowful. And we need that strength. And what she does, her last and greatest motherly act, friendly act, commend us to God, the source of all comfort, all consolation, and all strength. Eternal rest, grant to her, O Lord, and let perpetual shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. And may her soul and all the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. Well done, good and faithful servant. My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father and intercedes for his church and confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord. We join our prayers to his and now I invite, who's doing the uh, intercession? I left my copy. Okay, I'll do it for you. Don't worry about it. Thank you. Unless there's a copy. In baptism, Josephine received the light of Christ, scattered the darkness now, and leader of the ward of death. We pray to the Lord. Our sister, Josephine, was washed, nourished to the table of the Savior. Welcome her to the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom, most especially Bill, uh, Josephine's husband, and Bill, her son. Grant them everlasting home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Those who trust in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. The family and friends of Josephine seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. We assemble here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Josephine, 
Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, giver of peace, healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives are purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in the kingdom. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare the sacred altar for the holy <laughs> sacrifice of the Mass. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable. 
to God the Almighty Father. O Lord, be near, we pray, to your servant Josephine, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have affected her, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Philip, him up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. you are indeed holy, the fount of all holies. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new <coughs> and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, 
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Remember your servant Josephine, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant it that she, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Margaret, our patron saint, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine keeping, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Brothers and sisters in Christ, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now, Holy Mother Church invites her sons and daughters, who are Catholics, spiritual parents, to approach the sanctuary of the altar to receive communion.
requiem a tena donne
us pray. Almighty God, grant, we pray, that your servant Josephine, who has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final commendation, I'd like to extend to all the family, Mary, Teresa, Aaron, Chauvin, all of you, on behalf of Father Rasser and the people of this parish, our deepest condolences on the passing of Josephine. Um, one of my most greatest and most solemn duty as a priest, as God lays it out in sacred scripture, he will say it in these words, that comfort my people, give them comfort. And there is no time when we as the people of the Catholic Commonwealth need that comfort in the moment of death. And while the world will give you condolences, the instructions which God leave for us to comfort you are the words he gives in the Book of Wisdom. As I said earlier, in the Book of Wisdom, he lays it out. It's one of his greatest exposition in lifting the veil on death. And he says, the words I'm going to give you today, they are his. And the words are this, I didn't make death. This was never my intention. When I brought man into existence, I brought him for life, not for death. But it was a sinful man by his sinful words and evil deeds invited it, befriended it, and made a covenant with it. But my creative will and intent still stands. Life was what I intended, and life is what I'm going to bring about. That's why this faith, this Catholic faith and this place and these moments exist to comfort us in our sorrows. And may those words carry you and sustain you the coming weeks and months as you miss, and you should, because as they often say, our moms are our greatest friends. And I know for my mom, that was my greatest friend. And I can understand it and grasp it. But nevertheless, in the midst of it all, there is this great hope, this hope we have, and God, who is our hope. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Josephine, and now we come, in the, come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Josephine again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation was dispersed in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Josephine and the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Josephine in this life, the signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. 
open the gates of paradise to your servants and help us to remain, to comfort one another with assurances of faith till all meet in Christ and are with you, with our sister forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And Josephine, may the angels lead you into paradise, may the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Take our sister to her place of rest. Thank you. 